Dr. Ekuru Okot is the Third Way Alliance Party leader, and Kennedy Ondiek is the UDA coordinator in South Nyanza region. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Morning, morning. Happy morning. New Year. Man. Happy New Year. Yeah, actually, yeah, we haven't met this year. No, we, we haven't. haven't. Ah, happy New Year to you guys. Happy <laughs> Sana. Yeah. Yeah. I can see, see Keringet is actually sponsoring the show. Ah, yes. Big time. Big time. Yes. <laughs> Big time. Apa tuna kata maji. Now, <coughs> City has the day's proverb, as you know. Yep. And you know the Africa Cup of Nations is going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. In Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. Where we are looking at teams from across the continent, best teams mm -hmm. meeting and playing and losing and going home. But we are commemorating and celebrating our talent mm -hmm. in the continent. Mm -hmm. Ecobank is one of the sponsors yeah. of the Africa Cup of Nations. It's a Pan-African bank. So with that as well, City goes across Africa. Mm -hmm. every week to give us proverbs and this week's proverb courtesy of echo bank is from morocco mm. the kingdom of morocco mm. Mm -hmm. who have a government structure which is unique and very interesting yeah it's a unitary parliamentary semi-constitutional monarchy semi-constitutional mm. Yeah, a Kuro God cannot get a job there. You know, he writes oh, constitutions he for countries he in Africa. Can. He, can. he can write a semi constitution because in Morocco. You can't have <laughs> semi without the full, so he'll fit right in. Mm. Ah, yeah, the proverb. The proverb If you have a friend like honey, mm. don't eat him all at once. If you have a friend like honey, mm. don't eat him all at once. Who wants to go first? Kennedy, Dectari. <laughs> well, I think this, it probably means that uh, a good thing must be long-lasting, mm. yeah? Or maybe it could also mean that uh, don't be gluttonous, that uh, <laughs> once you've got something nice, <laughs> watch out, watch out. Is it any pooper? Yeah? Pooper. Watch out, pooper. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Good it? things must last longer. <clears throat> yeah, I look it, at it as the value of what you value. Mm. The value of what you value makes you have a need to have it longer than any other <coughs> thing so mm -hmm. if you have something you value so much then you can have interest of keeping that thing for as long as you can be alive mm, but why do the moroccans choose to tell us about a good friend what are they saying about friendship in this context don't take your friends for granted mm -hmm. don't take them for granted and also when you have friendships curate it manage it look after it well because mm -hmm. that's what taking for granted means because they are friends, but they are what we call fair weather friends. Mm. They are your friend because you are what you are today. And should that cease to be? Kuisha. I'm the Moroccans also Completely. meant that because mm. they are fairly desert-like. Kupata mm. asali ningumu kusoso. Kupata rafiki pia. But that is true. Yeah. Mm. Friends, <laughs> acquaintances are a dime a dozen. As they say in Kiswali, fungu peni. Mm. But uh, friends... Mm. Genuine friends. Genuine friends. Yeah, you catch up with many of them and they disappear mm. when the situation <laughs> changes. So mm. It's important that you nurture the little you have. The few friends, friends, the few good friends that you have. Mm -hmm. that you have. Keep them. Nurture them. Keep them. Yeah. Mm. Kennedy, I want to start with you. You are the UDA coordinator in South Nyanza region. Yes. Which region is this? <coughs> South Nyanza is a region uh, lower, the lower part of uh, River Miriu. It uh, covers uh, Homabe County and uh, Miguri is County. Is it lower or upper? It's lower part of because River, we're, lower part we're, of no, because River Miriu. Miriu. Yeah. Uh, when you come from Kisumu, we treat it as upper because we have been trained to believe that Kisumu mm. is a higher part of our region. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter the real uh, geographical no, sphere. It's lower. <laughs> <laughs> in our Isn't that what they used to call South and Northern Kavirondo? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Southern Kavirondo is now the Omabe Migori, yeah. all the way. and yeah. the Northern Kavirondo was the Kisumu Siaya. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. And I don't know why I'm thinking, but the area he's talking about <coughs> is higher. You climb yeah. as you're going there. Or do you so decide? city you wanted to be called North Nyanza? No, no, the, the uh, southern, yes, southern Nyanza, southern Nyanza, or lower. It, it, it originally covered uh, even Nyamira mm. and uh, Kisi, but mm. for political structuring, we take uh, yeah. Homobe County and Kisumu uh, and uh, Miguri County Miguri. to be the regions in South Nyanza. Okay, in respect of our organization okay yes. so kisi now ceases to be part of south uh, no they have their coordinating system okay. so i am or in the party structure in the mm -hmm. party structure okay okay you, you're the big boss mm -hmm. of the third way alliance party mm -hmm. right how well, many members do you have 
we we have i think over 48000 or 50 if i'm not wrong mm. yeah and the last time i checked mm. Mm. so we this this issue of, by the this issue of party membership is now before court yeah. because the the uh, the register of political parties has chosen to interpret what membership of, to a political party should mean mm. that you must um, you must be a registered uh, voter which is not true um <clears throat> and i think that's i don't want to discuss it in this because it's before court mm. uh, yeah, it's actually a very very active issue in court right now and we are challenging that membership should be in fact if you go back to when we were proposing the punguza mizigo mm. constitution amendment we had said that once you reach the age of 18 it should automatically be deemed as a, a voter mm. because if, you, if if people can marry at 18 and become responsible adults what is so special about this casting just the vote that you must now go and register. register and yet kenya has given you a national id id card and for us we are looking at it even as cheapening the electioneering process in kenya mm. you know because we spend a lot of money in every vote, year in voter recruitment Re voter uh, recruitment registration, registration yeah. vote so <laughs> once you get a national id which is actually by the way, constitutionally a document recognized by the constitution in article article 12 mm. that should automatically make you a person who can make a decision about where this country must go yeah the problem only begins mm -hmm. at the point of now making the choice to make that decision you know you might be automatically <coughs> an adult mm -hmm. but you see electoral process is a choice so if someone has not yet made a decision to make that choice which choice of yeah. voting they're not registering as a voter that person should not be treated no, but uh, we, to make but a political you'll, you'll make that choice on the day of, of election. Exactly. If on the 9th of August yeah. you decide I want to participate, yeah. you yeah. just wake up and go and participate. When you, yeah, last year, you see the process of registering mm. to participate mm. is the choice point. It's the point at which we make the choice. You make a choice to trying, be a registered. I guess that's where the we argument are trying in court to is. Lessen yeah, the that is the argument in court. Mm. We are trying to lessen bureaucracy in our, our political decision making. Mm. You know, and, and, and I think the same way we say that everybody has a right you know so we should allow people to exercise those rights almost automatically and and you know Ndiyaki, there are 8 million kenyans last year who did not vote no 2022 sorry mm -hmm. 8 millions did not even bother mm -hmm. yeah? then there's another 8 million who are also registered by the way I mean, who could have registered but refused to register because, uh, I mean, I don't know, statistically I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. They said there are 30 million eligible voters in Kenya. Mm -hmm. 30 million. Yeah. 80 million refused even to go to register. Mm -hmm. Then those who registered about um, 22 million, eight of them said that we, are not, we, don't, we don't care. Mm -hmm. We don't think we will participate in this, in this process. You know, so, and this is why I keep on saying, <clears throat> and I'll repeat it here, Ondiaki's political party is actually a minority government. So let me let me break it down for you, City. Yeah, twenty-four million registered. No, no. So let's say let's work with the uh, statistics, uh, the um, with the figures that there are thirty million eligible Kenyans. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Eight million chose not to even register to vote, yes. meaning they did not want to participate in the process of electing a government mm. okay. or exercising that choice that Tundiek is talking about. Okay. So twenty-two million Kenyans registered. Okay. To participate in an election. Yes. On the day of exercising that choice, eight. that decision on Dick is talking about. Eight million. Eight million decided we don't see the point. Sixteen million so far. So 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 that's sixteen million. <laughs> then about seven million or eight million mm. voted for Uda. For Uda. For Kenya. Kwanza. About seven million or six million that about voted for uh, Azimio. Mm. <clears throat> so comparatively. Yeah, or proportionally, whatever. I mean, I don't know even the right word now to use. <laughs> if you have got a government of el elected by 8 million Kenyans, let's just say round it to 8 million, yeah. but you have 22 million who do not even elect you, yeah, very who did not exercise the choice to legitimize you. And you know, part of the reason why you can see Ruto and Gashago and the rest back on the campaign trail is because of desperately seeking that legitimacy. Mm. Yeah. That legitimation. Uh, because you know if you've got 22 million eligible kenyans out of 55 million 
you know, uh, I think so. City, am I making some sense? Okay, a lot. No, no, no. You are, but hmm? let's hear what okay, Kenya is. Are elect, you know, we and we get our leaders through election. And we'll process. go back to the topic of uh-huh. today. Yes, we, we, how our politics has become so commercialized. We huh? get our leaders through electoral electoral process, and yes. electoral process is a choice making process. And uh, that's true. And the constitution which he drafted, and I'm very happy that he was in the committee of experts mm. who made it clear that a particular number of people forming a particular percentage of those who are registered and have participated in election form the majority. Mm. So it doesn't matter how many participate, provided that they are registered, and they took the choice of participating in that election. Mm -hmm. We don't count those who did not participate. Neither do we count those who are eligible to register but have not registered. You know why that argument fails? It's it's technical technical versus philosophy. But but you know why that (laughs) argument (laughs) fails? (laughs) And when the key should be and very honest with Kenya. It will suffice in court. Mm. It will suffice in court. Okay. Okay. Technically, Ken- yes. Mm. Kennedy, Technically, yes. Yeah. Kennedy on the key uh, is uh, inside UDA Kabisa. Mm. Yes, he should be. But That's why, he's here. why his argument? <laughs> why his argument does not hold water mm. going forward? Because it is his top leadership who have now said to Kenyans, you know, if you didn't elect us, you're not part of this government because this government is a, a company. DP Gashago himself said that openly. So it justifies what I'm trying to say that now if you say only 8 million Kenyans are the people you, you care about mm. who have got shareholding in this company called the government of the Republic of Kenya, then on Ondiaki's argument will not stand. Because constitutionally, yes, I agree with you in principle, mm. yes, once a government <laughs> has been elected, it must serve everybody equally or mm. equitably. Yeah. Ondiaki yeah? do not respond. To, to, uh, watch, watch your end. Ondiaki watch her. Watch <laughs> <laughs> What Chan and I, he, this one we will not finish. <laughs> yes. even get the I would have talked about the shareholding. Oh, no, 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 no. Just, no, shareholding, no. What Chan and I, yeah, just, yeah, just exactly. So either serve us equally as Kenyans, <laughs> like in the moment you bring another argument to say that uh, I know so, so, you, so, you, so, you so, did so not have it. Now, okay. parties, <laughs> you two are leaders in your respective parties. Mm. All right, we are seeing a lot of activity now. Mm. in terms of recruitment of party members in, in preparation for the next election and then we know what will happen after, thereafter as we're talking about recruitment of party members the uda secretary general was here last week and he was telling us one of the reasons why you postponed your elections last year is because you want to recruit a bit more members mm. so that by the time you participate in the elections in march or is it april then you have gotten a few more members some from the uh, kenya kwanza small small parties Others from, fall along the way yes. from other parties, <laughs> <laughs> you know, naturally. You know, yeah. so it's 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 an important thing that you do this exercise of recruitment of members. Are you doing the same? Are you recruiting more members? We do. do you have I a mean, uh, the process, it's an open book. The process of recruitment is is open. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can choose to join in political party. I mean, that's why we are required by law in the, under the Political Parties Act to have at least a minimum of. Um, a thousand members in a majority of counties meaning 24 24 counties mm. yeah so re- the process of recruitment is a, it's, an, it's ongoing, an ongoing process yeah yeah have you launched a drive now to ours is continuous we have members joining us there are even members actually who leave our party by the yeah? mm. i mean and the political parties that now requires that when you leave a party you have, you have to send a resignation letter and mm. all that so the process of recruitment of members is an ongoing process so let's be honest mm. What influences people? What motivates people to join a party or to leave a party and join another one? The biggest uh, <coughs> for me, I don't know. Practically, what, Kenya. No, Kenyans not, not according to the book. Yeah. Not what should happen. Mm. What does happen? Not what you yeah. wrote. A lot of a lot of people are influenced by populism. Of a, say, <coughs> for example, the, the the leadership in that particular particular political party, mm. and that populism also comes with the whole idea of money. You know that if we don't have money in this country to participate in a political process becomes almost difficult mm. uh, but there's nothing wrong with the because you see if you're like a farmer you you, you say that I, I i grow oranges but if you can't take your oranges to the market we will not know you're a you, you're a farmer yeah. so that idea then calls for logistical uh, need yeah. that you must be able to go to move from place a to a so money is still very important mm. the problem i have is the manner in which our politics has been commercialized purely for financial gain, especially by those who want actually to seek the leadership of the of the country. And that's why they go around, for example, undermining other small <coughs> political party, buying members from other political party, and it's always money in exchange. 
So and that's, what happens? Uh, yes. People are bought uh, oh, to move from uh, one listen, party to another? The, yes, the Nani. Uh, what? Uh, what? This MP, Mbato, the MP from, uh, uh, you know, Kisi, Osoro. Mm. Osoro said it publicly that he, because he's a, he's a whip, a party whip in parliament, I, I before know. before anybody goes out of the country, they must pass by his office to give him something. And he said it in public that Nyamazeni, yeah. Once I'm he, done he, he, talking, he, he, I'll give you money. I have made a lot of money. He's so, intending to bring UDA <laughs> under attack in no, no. respect of that. So <clears throat> I, I think I will. <laughs> it's my respond. senior, but I will have to have serious uh, moment of response okay. Okay. because uh, basically, uh, in the question you post, uh, it requires that we understand the political terrain of our country and uh, Kenya being a, a, a very young democracy. Sometimes we try to run in the in the, in the lanes that ought to be taken by the strong democracies, but uh, it is a belief. The principles that guide our politics today, and uh, senior here will agree, is uh, let us go to football first. If you go to the, the teams which are currently playing, you will find that if a team is on top of the league for two consecutive or three consecutive years, young fans will more will go to that team. They'll gravitate uh, yeah, they will gravitate towards that team. Uh, when a party, for example, like UDA today is coming out to be very strong. In fact, if you find UDA t penetrating regions like our region, uh, which has been known to be ODM zones, mm -hmm. many people tend to want to know who what is here. And uh, where the, with the kind of uh, structure which is put in place, you realize that many people would wish to... I don't want to belittle his party because they have not put up a serious competitive marketing strategy which allow them uh, be more visible. But uh, UD has grown very visible based on the activities which are either on the ground or on uh, online platforms. Is money a factor? Yeah. Only? I don't think money is a factor, but generally money greases different processes. Yeah, we cannot run away from the fact that... You do, you do for say that you're contradicting yourself. No, I don't. Uh, you have you know, to be facilitated. Like to the show yes. with the people in government. Yes. Because every time they speak, it becomes so difficult it's, to defend the government. It's not contradicting. The fact is, you know, when, 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 okay. when, 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 when you want to move from yes. one place to another, mm -hmm. in Kenya you can't move freely, and we don't have wings, so no one flies, so you have to pay at least to, tr to be transported. So that is not a problem with money. So I only want to say that the fact that he talks about commercialization in terms of membership recruitment, mm. it's really not... Uh, the, the truth, like what he was accusing Osoro of. If maybe Osoro said people pass through his office, maybe for a particular activity. Not maybe he said it's yeah. on record. Yeah, but mm -hmm. even yourself, when you came from your house, you had to spend on your tea. So you, you, can, uh, you uh, cannot uh, fail to eat. Let so, me ask you, if yes. I may, is the intended original role of political parties in this country still being upheld? I ask this because if we can move from one party mm. to another party to another party whose ideologies would be fundamentally different can we say that truly it is after ideologies we're chasing or are individuals chasing vehicles opportunities. for opportunity that is why i said we are young democracy you know mm. when you look at stable democracies even in the united states they had a long time of structuring reorganizing moving hoping and the rest and uh, we are only 60 some 60 years so 60 years is not enough for us to graduate to that very strong democracy and if we insist that we have to be like those ones who are having blue and red and uh, blue, red. blue red regions, mm -hmm. then we are going to be forcing ourselves to walk so fast when we were just give, born the other day. No. So I just want to okay. believe, I want mm -hmm. to express my belief <coughs> that um, our ideology might still be similar in all the agenda we have. If you look at even the Kenya Kwanzaa and Azimio, if you looked at their manifestos, mm -hmm. there was no serious difference. It's mm -hmm. because we have a common ideology as a country. We are only looking at the groupings in mm -hmm. which maybe such our ideologies are able to be easily ac accessed. Even uh, Banao Kot will run to another party if he realizes that the friends like me, I'm his friend, by mm. the way, friends like me are in that particular place. So maybe I will say ideology are applies to a great extent, but not absolutely in all extent. Dr. Ekuru Alcott, party leader of the Third Way Alliance Party, and Kennedy Ondieki, who's the OD, UDA coordinator for South see, Nyanza region. Yeah, you see. Oh, what's the ODA? ODA. ODA. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Yeah, yeah. It oh, could oh, be oh, that oh, by oh, the end of the year. UDA, <laughs> coordinator ODA. for South Nyanza region. ODA. These are our guests this morning. Commercialization of politics, that's our topic, City.
Tell me something. Mm -hmm. in, a, a, in a region that is known to be predominantly ODM, how is UDA faring? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I believe that uh, our people in our region understand the constitution as was written. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were, first of all, tre treated to the venture into Article 37, which allowed them to demonstrate uh, seriously the other day. But uh, being that they are very clever people, they have read through to 38, which now allows them to join any political party. And uh, uh, our region is really getting into yellow. Mm. Uh, the reason being that um, we have been in a monarchical kind of uh, leadership where in the national platform we have democracy but at the regional level or at the tr uh, the community level it's a semi constitutional monarchy it's a semi constitutional <laughs> monarchy <laughs> where, go where, we have, where we have believed where we have lived under the 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 the, 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 the name of dingaism which mm. has stayed for so long mm. and we have moved from different political party to another under the same umbrella of dingaism so our people have decided just to open up and allow uh, democracy to take us. And uh, in fact, we are encouraging <coughs> them. Even your wife and uh, a wife and a husband can be in different political parties, especially now that UDA is becoming competitive and strongly competitive against ODM. Uh, we are encouraging existence of the two parties and we are selling the ideology. The, cha the reason why ODA, UDA is picking faster than ODM is because serious activists who are supporting ODM and helping ODM to keep the numbers and gather more are now the ones who are in UDA. Some of us were very strong members of ODM, but mm -hmm. after realizing that this single uh, party mentality is heading, uh, heading nowhere with us, we have decided to change. It's a serious paradigm shift, and everyone is moving towards UDA. Were you a regional uh, coordinator in ODM? Uh, in ODM, I served a different... In fact, I was a delegate. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I ran against Sifuna okay. for no, Secretary no, no. General. Did you have this kind of office, a regional coordinator, mm -hmm. a big office? No, I didn't. Uh, yeah. There was no such uh, position. So say in fact, they are, also, they are also creating it now. They so have realized so the that reason, regional coordination is very powerful. Yeah. <laughs> the reason so on Diaki right now <laughs> is a regional coordinator for Southern Nyanza mm -hmm. is because of facilitation and opportunities in UDA. As a matter of fact, let's be very brutally honest here. Um, I'm, I don't want to, let me just say generally, okay. most political parties in Kenya are not driven by any ideology. None. Including the Even, Alliance. Yeah? In fact, the only political party in my view that has an ideology is <laughs> Stadio Alliance Kenya. And you should read our manifesto. Okay. Yeah? We are social democrats. Mm. You know, we are neither the far left or the far, so we have, we have a, a belief. Mm. We believe in transformation of this country, uh, change in this country. And you, you can see even from what we have done since 2027 when I participated uh, first in politics. What 2017. We have, 2017, sorry. <laughs> what, what we have done mm. uh, over, the, over the period of time, including bringing that very good proposal called Punguza Mizigo, which these people fought, by the way, mm. because it did not come from somebody who is supposed to be a populist. And he mentioned Odingaism. There's no difference between Odinga, William Ruto, and all the other big shots. Because for them, it is their names and the money they have that attracts people to them. Because, and the reason I say, Undiaki, there's no ideology even in your political party, UDA and, uh, and ODM. Look at the manner in which they have kept on changing from political parties. I mean, le let's, let's, let's go back memory lane. 1992. Uh, William Ruto, now president, uh, joins uh, YK92, Youth for Khan 1992. In 97, he vice under Khan. In 2002, I think he joins ODM, if I'm not wrong. Or, or no, he stayed with Khan. He stayed with Khan, yeah? mm. Then 2007, he becomes part of the, of the, of the ODM. Mm. Then in 20, 2013, he, he joins with his party. What is his party? URP. Uh, URP. 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 URP together mm. with, the, you know. Look at that transformation. Now it is UDA. And I can tell you, I'm not a prophet of doom, but I can tell you, I suspect there will be another new formation in 2027. So meaning, really, these people are not driven by any ideology at all. It's about the opportunities. And that's why, but, when you but look at... But told you, we, we're a young democracy. No, 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 no. We are forming no, no, ideologies. You see, you see, you see what Ondieki is telling us, eh? mm. because we are not America or the UK or whatever, 
whatever, let's still remain in stone age. We are in the age of technology and information. It, now that now that look at Wendyeki is 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 well dressed. How, is well how dressed. do you expect why, why can't Wendyeki now say to our colonizers? Ondieki, 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 how long did earlier? it take you before you start wearing a very nice uh, no, how old is jacket our parliament and building like compared this? to the you should have house, said, house, you know? because I'm not in America, <laughs> mm. let me still uh, wear my, my skin and matawi until a certain time. There's no time frame. Now we have knowledge. We have we have we have the we have the advantage of knowledge on how we can do things better. Yes. So why do we want to get to get stuck to the fact that oh Americans started 200 years ago? But is it no. getting stuck or is it acknowledging just the process of change <clears throat> and how it, difficult it is for people to actually change from a position that they've held with the traditional or not? When today, you are? today, with the knowledge we have and the opportunity, say presented upon yourself, you can say oh. I don't want to go and live, say, in Karen or, uh, you know, Runda, because let me still move from, I don't know, Eastlands, Nikisonga, Kido, Kido. But if you have the opportunity, you can live a better life. And, and, and the same thing for me in political governance. Mm. I think if we can do our things better, mm. yeah, mm. as a country, we can change our society. Today, we cannot be told that... Uh, Let's not industrialize the opportunities that we have in our country because uh, America did that slowly. Today we know. C city. <laughs> today we know, we know that we have got uh, we have got <coughs> titanium in this country. We have got certain <laughs> natural resources. So why can't we industrialize? Do we have to wait until uh, you are one hundred years old to be? You look, but you that's look. not what he was saying. <coughs> You look no, at the double speak. Or, or, or you look at the double speak. Let him say. Okay. Let him say what he wants to say. Yeah, you look at the double speak in him. Mm -hmm. There's a moment he talks theory. There's a moment he talks practice. When when theory favors him, he runs quickly to it. And when practice uh, favors him, he runs quickly to it. When he looks at the street of Kenyan politics, he brings money in it. When he looks at when he when he looks at the maturity of democracy in Kenya, he looks at only what he wants to see. I, I can tell you that as a country, we are having a history, and our history is as brief as sixty years. Uh, the countries that Actually, he studied no, we from, we have uh, our history goes beyond, uh, beyond freedom. Years. Well, beyond. Since our political uh, on, yeah. on, and our democracy, our multi-party democracy. Uh, apart from the little of 1966 to 1969, we remained in one party up to 1992. So we, we have to understand our political uh, uh, development we all from 1992. We so, yeah, that yeah. being forced to or being That's able to, uh, yeah, it was, whichever yeah. thing it was, we were under it. Mm -hmm. So we remained in it up to until when we were able to take ourselves out in 1992. And from 1992 to date, you cannot strictly uh, put Kenyans into a particular path because they are yet to be adopted to that path and uh, live with it. So I am only uh, pleading with the senior Ondeki, that the I theory am, we read in Constitution... using the year 1992. Yeah, that was when we started multipartism in Kenya. And that's now when we need to develop our parties. In fact, Actually, your party... Multipartism existed at independence. At, at independence, independence yes. yes. Even before. Yeah. Even before independence, actually. Mm. Yes. yes. If you go... But now, Ndiaki, I'm happy you're using the year 1992. You see, comparatively, if you say 1992, Kenyans decided we are going to party, party democracy. Yes, yes. Yeah? Now, let's compare to, say, what people like citing about the oldest democracy in the world. How long did it take, for example, the Americans before they could even allow women to vote? before they could allow civil liberties to be practiced. So meaning, we have progressed much faster comparatively mm -hmm. yeah. than, than even the Americans. Yeah. 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 And that's what we, we are trying. And, and, and that's the point, test, and that's we the might point, collapse. And that's the point I was trying to tell you. <laughs> with knowledge, with know-how now, we don't need to wait until certain certain years, certain decades happen before we can say we, have now, uh, we are now progressing. We can transform our country quickly. The truth for the matter, and Onyek is not uh, admitting it, that the reason he has joined UDA, which is his right, of course, he's trying to justify it under Article 38 of, of the Constitution, is because there are opportunities in UDA. Yeah? And, and he, has, he, has, he has singled out Odingaism. Nobody forced them to follow Odinga in, 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 in Lua Nyanza. You know, the, uh, part of the reason why people join political parties in this country is regionalism, tribalism, and money. We can we can sit here and argue until the you know heavens you know pass on us. But if without money, you know, the following of a mm -hmm. political party becomes very and Kenyans hardly interrogate ideas. And what uh, is this money factor? Because there are two things <coughs> that you had mentioned, both of you. Yeah. You acknowledge mm -hmm. that you need money resources 
for mobilization, for operationalization of party activities. Yes. That's one. I mean, it's obvious. Yeah. It's administrative. Mm -hmm. What's the other money factor? So the money factor, let me, let, me, let me break that up. The money factor for me here, for example, if people come to say, um, people call me mm. expecting that I'm this uh, rich guy because I'm a party leader, I have money. They ask me to come for Arambe, they mm. ask me for this and that. Mm. So there is that expectation that whoever is leading a political party must be rich. Mm -hmm. I must be able to have a big pass to just keep on giving handouts. Mm -hmm. And that's the culture of handouts in Kenya. Meaning, therefore, that if you don't really have money, trust me, people, I mean... You'll you, not attract. Ondiaki and CT come from a region <coughs> called Duonyanza, mm. where, yes. you know, there's a phrase called Gonya. After, uh, after uh, a meeting, <laughs> it, it uh, release uh, uh, me, uh, untie me. Allow, yeah? allow me to answer. So, I'll allow me to answer that. <laughs> that is, that is a factor of whoever, that is, of whoever is organizing a political gathering or meeting is mm. expected to actually part with money. So it's a public expectation for handouts. There is a public expectation okay. that you must participate in, uh, you know, in fundraisers and all that. Kenyans will not mm. take you seriously, politically speaking, mm. if you actually do not donate money. Especially if you are a political party leader or you have sought leadership in this country i don't know about does you, money uh, have a mm. have a role to play in the relationship between political parties so 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 let me say this the reason people actually in this country ma majority i think especially those in political leadership actually seek political position especially at the national level or in government is to accumulate wealth and once they accumulate wealth they use that money now to enhance their political strength on the ground that's why you will see you see speedy transformation of individuals once they get into 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 politics so are you saying there's no intention by individuals from the onset to actually make sure that the job that is being given to them by kenyans by virtue of the vote to be done there's no intention from the beginning is to go make money and then after that you use this same money because we're talking about commercialization of this thing to essentially pull the wool over the eyes of people it's clear that nothing is being done, or very little, but then you keep enticing folks no, over gener and over general. again to make them think that you are doing I something. Am, I'm sure there are exceptions mm. to that general rule, but the general rule is this. People get into politics in this country for fa purely financial gain. I agree to a great extent, but I... I wish to look at the commercialization aspect in two angles, mm. necessity and lack of it. When there is necessity, there is need to have some finances. And I think that is not commercialization. That is facilitation. Mm. So we have to differentiate between facilitation of politics and also commercialization. In terms of, uh, th when, when I look at the word commerce, and then bring it in politics, I see a very big uh, f philosophy that ought to have its own school of thought. But I think in uh, the Kenyan uh, structure, mm. using money in running of campaigns or running of political parties' activities, it is not commercialization. It mm. is facilitating. But what Dr. Cott talks about also makes some real sense in the Kenyan system, and it's in Africa, and in fact all over the world. First, no one will entrust a person who has not taken care of any little wealth with the wealth of the state. If you are poor uh, to the extent that you cannot take care of even yourself, no one will entrust you with that. <laughs> Let us be honest. Even in the old kingdoms, the kings were people who were either winners of a war, you must have won a war, you must have been leading a, a particular group, and that's when you could be entrusted with leadership. So I think, first of all, there's part of <coughs> equipping yourself with necessary education mm -hmm. and also equipping yourself with necessary experience mm -hmm. and equipping yourself with necessary support, whether euphoria or just but real support. So using money, when you are invited to a function, like, for example, I attend some, I have done some business, I have some money. So when I'm called to a church, I can contribute. Mm -hmm. And when I contribute, they will always be looking upon me mm -hmm. that I can be able to take care of them so that beyond the church, I can help in fee. Mm -hmm. uh, beyond the fee, I can help in funerals. So they will always look upon you and then they will entrust you with even their faith. Yeah. So sometimes they entrust you with their faith just because of how much they have been seeing your willingness, however small it is. Mm -hmm. So when you get to power, it now al allows you maybe your own salary together with certain accessible things, which we are in the world, we are mm -hmm. in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And you see, there are certain 
and things which you'll, you'll automatically access whenever you are in a, in a position. Mm -hmm. uh, decision making. When you're making a serious decision, some of them come with money. So I think that uh, we cannot sleep in the sand and cover our heads in a cocoon and yeah. think that we can do things without spending. We must spend, but it only depends on your capacity to spend. So what's the threshold then for making it all right? Personally, I, I believe. Question here. So, for example, we know very well the sway that political parties have in this country. We cannot run away from that we reality. Can't. Yep. And there could be things that are allegedly done, but okay, we know if we're going to speak um, outrightly, of what we've heard, of what we know. Yeah. We know also the push and pull that political parties have. If I ask you to move to my party, mm. I know that there's something that you will bring, whether it's crowds of people, whether it's followership. <laughs> if I entice you uh, with some kind of... Uh, reward. Uh -huh, <laughs> reward. Are we still saying that's okay and that's facilitation? As in you need to move from your party to mine and it's facilitation so that works? No, no. That's the commercialization that we are talking about. <laughs> yeah, I believe that, that. if parties are founded on ideology and that I really feel that this party is going the way in which the nation needs for its development, mm. for its economic responsibility and development, why should I have to reward you for moving? Mm. Or why should I have to ask for a reward to move? I, I, to bring followership? I, you know, Ondeke, I don't Ondeke, think Ondeke, it's Ondeke should be very honest <coughs> with Kenyans. There are members of parliament who have outrightly said openly, Ondeke, that parliament is just, just being bought. And UDA is one and, of those political and, parties that actually is buying and, and that's members an of parliament. Which you no. can't substantiate. Ondeke, it's an allegation I'm telling you, there are members of parliament who have openly said it. I mean, it, Utien, is, it is confessions by yeah. Utien, the takers. Mm. Yes. So the, yeah, they say the without money. The level. I wanted to attend to what uh, she raised, mm. which is very important. That uh, do you get swayed by the facilitative capacity of a party mm. to do the activities? And uh, no, no, okay, no, fine. not to do the activities. To, to join, join their them. party. Yes, yeah. join them. Yeah. While joining them, you will be cutting out the activities. Like now I'm cutting out <laughs> UDA activities. So I am not swayed by the capacity of UDA to facilitate me, but. Certain circumstances make you change. Like, like, like in our region. <laughs> uh, let, let us focus on our region. Mm. We are coming to UDA to create an alternative voice. We have had one voice for far too long. That's and that true. is the reason why we many are political coming parties in. Uh, And uh, I, I want also to add that facilitation here depends on somebody's willingness. There are people who have not been willing <laughs> to do <laughs> anything. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, uh, Patrick Lumumba once said, <laughs> and I listened to him one day, he which, said that uh, uh, PLO, the, the, the PLO, yes. uh, he once said that. Lock out, you know. Uh, yes, lodge. The, the, our lodge. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he once said that in Kenya, you may be voted, not because you know everything that you need to do, but it's because people want you. And uh, that's where he brought example of the village fool being made a uh, a, a, a counselor mm. they call him to talk even when he is not having anything to say but simply because he is that counselor mm. so power in kenya and political power in kenya it might not be even based on qualification as you have but it's because the people decide when people decide they will decide that way irrespective of how that thing is decided you why don't, why don't we I, advance I, this conversation there's something i want to say mm. here mm. you know whenever people talk of political parties yeah Mm -hmm. and they look at the West, they are selective. Mm -hmm. Party politics in the West is even more interesting than ours in this sense. Mm -hmm. You will find, for instance, that most political parties in the West have regions where they have clout. Mm -hmm. It is known. Mm -hmm. And in that clout, they have something they call safe seats. Mm -hmm. Because that area votes Labour. Mm -hmm. So, as I say, so long as you're on a Labour ticket, mm -hmm. you're going to go through. Yeah. Now, we substitute that with communities that we refer to as tribes. Tribes. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then we have political <coughs> parties which are also assigned majority to certain tribes. Mm -hmm. Our attempt right now seems to be to try and mix this up so that there's a national look to all these things. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing that we're doing. It's a fallacy. We are wasting our time. No, it is a good thing we're trying to do. But it will not stop us from voting the way we voted in the past in terms of who do I think I would trust with my vote? But I think in Kenya, the difference is this, and Ondeki has alluded to that, is that in these regions, 
or these uh, tribal cocoons there is a, a father figure yeah mm -hmm. yeah that if that father figure doesn't dictate and he knows it very well like for example in in places of luo nyanza the issue for example of a certificate for you to participate in an election must be directed from somewhere else mm. Mm. so so it is not even about the poli the, the political party's constitution that we are following or the rules and regulation of a political party is about what the party leader says listen i'm a living example when i offered myself to run for president of this country some of my friends you know people have gone to school with they look at me and say are you joke are you joking uh, see you're trukana how many votes do you get? <laughs> how much money do you, do you have so the idea that me to offer myself i must come with but you need were, a stronghold were, were they not being honest and realistic yes they were very honest <coughs> but that's what i'm saying i want us now to take this conversation to another level which is where okay i think we are discussing the problem in this country now how do we clean it up i think we need to have a, a robust conversation going forward mm. and i'm happy that uh, Ndiaki and his other um, members are actually daring uh, Luo Nyanza to bring in a, a political party of another political leader uh, who is not popular in that region. And or I hope a it can be a of another tribe. <laughs> Yes, on that tribe, yeah, because okay. because that's like, yeah. that's exactly how we are choreographed here. Yeah. Okay. You know, if I'm so I'm so so I'm happy this conversation is going that way, and I hope really uh, that and I've said it before even in your show here that uh, President William Ruto is actually providing us with an opportunity to begin to interrogate leadership in this country yes, he because he came with the narrative that you know uh, this is a hustler hustler nation hustler government wheelbarrow person nini. He said I was a chicken seller, as if there's nothing wrong with selling chicken. I mean, if, if you're a chicken seller, actually, you're, you're in commerce. You're, you're a businessman. You're an investor. But now that you brought yourself to our level, Luko Chini, now we say, okay, one of our own has now taken over the leadership of this country. I hope it really opens the eyes of Kenyans an opportunity for Kenyans to begin to interrogate that even when now we give on Dieki, it comes come from Luo Nyanza or Ekuru or Kotondo or Sitia. Let's, let's begin to interrogate the ideas. Mm. I hope we can now take this conversation to that level. Than to say, uh, how much money do you have, uh, Latif? You know, which region are you from? Mm. How many members of your tribe? I mean, because even if today I became president of the Republic of Kenya, Zatrukana, it's not like at my salary i'll be telling the turkanas you know line up now and set us this is uh, the opportunity and you see that has been part of our problem for the longest time that and 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 what part, part of the reason i disagree with the this uh, group from luo nyanza that now attacking o odm and going to uda because they of the narrative they presented that oh you know uh, we are joining government because we want to bring development to our people development is not uh, it's a right of every kenyan you know so we don't have to beg <coughs> we don't have to say let's associate ourselves with the government of the day so that we get okay, development it, it, should it, it, it should be a right it should be a right but the political narrative and that's the commercialization because i, I tend it, to disagree there well uh, i have a right to disagree oh, yeah, yeah. you disagree but is it not true that the narrative people are putting out there that our association with the president is bringing goodies. and the government is bringing goodies Ooh. as if it is the president's, uh, you know, uh, prerogative. Uh, prerogative to decide where to do a road, especially when you talk about I things like roads. When we talk you about know. our region, yeah. and uh, you know, he talks about our region more as if he comes from there. And I'm coming no, I'm a from Kenyan. There, I'm a I'm national. I'm a, my you thinking know, is national. I don't think <laughs> I have village. Here, uh, for <laughs> us, we are still more village in thinking, and that's yeah. why I'm only coordinating South Nyan, no, no, not no. Turkana. But now you are educated. <laughs> but you're speaking very <laughs> good <laughs> English. <laughs> I, I really want to let you know that the struggle we have in our region mm. may not be understood by him mm. or any other person if it's not well explained. Mm. We have what is called fatigue. Mm. As a people, sometimes you can be fatigued. Mm. Yeah. You can be in a struggle. You know, you can be in a struggle, you can be in a struggle, but in the process you get tired. Uh, we have been tired. You know, we are highly erudite. Uh, we are serious erudites, if you look at our people. We are highly learned, uh, so sharp. If, if so to say, <laughs> but you realize that we have been. But so you used to think like a in a just village. a minute <laughs> because of the old mentality yeah. that we have to stand with one of our own mm. has made us remain in the peripheries for all the time, except mm. when we got into a Nusumkate government. Mm. Every intention of every uh, political party is to capture state power, mm. but we have, as for all the time we have mutated from different political parties, we have not succeeded, and we have to evaluate ourselves that mm. where did the rain start beating us mm. and. How can we avoid the rain? The thing is, association with the government 
is necessary and uh, that is why it is called state you know in the social uh, so in the, when we had the social theory uh, everybody surrendered their power to state so that they can have the capacity to take care of themselves so the state has a duty and you cannot call it a right only because there's a time when a decision is made by an individual you cannot force a decision to be made in a more of your right uh, in, a, in a rightful manner so but if you were the president today you would not appoint me who did not run along with you as your vice neither shall you appoint me as your chief of staff that is now what i wanted to explain about the shareholding bid hmm. that you cannot pretend that <laughs> since i voted uh, x i expect y to welcome me the following day in the political you competitive know, the nature, more, it has not happened even in the uh, external Ondeke. countries. So, the more I listen to Ondeke, the more now I know there's a problem in this country. Uh, no, in our region, uh, someone like Ondeke has region. not read the constitution. <laughs> no, but you don't talk the constitution all the time. Sometimes you talk what Practical happened. Practical reality. Yes. No, so no, 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 no. The, 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 when we started, you didn't want to talk the constitution. Now you are getting back. Thirty to the seconds. Same can I can I give him the reality? I mean, Thirty make, seconds. I, I want to make seconds, the following yeah. submission mm. that as a region. And uh, that is South Nyanza and Nyanza at large. We have been so much uh, into a particular path and we have decided as a people to look at it the other way so that we allow uh, uh, comparatives. We can have A and B to compare. Being with one wife, for example, I don't know whether... Uh, you continue. <laughs> should allow, you know, polygamy mm. allows you... Ten seconds. Yeah, polygamy <laughs> allows you chances mm. of knowing who can serve you best. And that is why <laughs> <laughs> our region has embraced... Uh, you know, That's the truth. Thirty seconds, Akuru, as you conclude. <laughs> On the <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you let me just explain one of the one of the reasons why we came up with 47 counties 25 seconds yes 40, 40, 47 counties mm. is so that the counties can be the conveyor belt for development now this this is a false narrative on is thanks just because of the association with the president and the government of the day the 47 counties are supposed to be developmental what on should be telling us here in the county of Oma Bay, where he comes from is the money that is devolved there accountable and has it been used pro properly that is the development we want so that now we mm. can begin to talk about one kenya what are the name of village G, my, my tribe that is theory we will invite you guys again yeah so we can have a longer conversation on this asante Nisan for joining us dr ekuru Court <laughs> and uh, kennedy on kennedy is the uda coordinator for south nyanza region thank you for tuning in kenya's <laughs> biggest conversation this is the situation room the only way to start your day.